In this video, we're gonna fix our used tunnel cover. Stay tuned. Welcome back and or to the channel. Today we are fixing our used tunnel cover that I got and we need to do this before we install it on the two wheel drive tank. Now the point of doing this, I talk about some truck bed accessories. If I get a chance, sliding it right up there, go ahead and check that video out. I talk about different truck bed accessories, how you can customize your truck to fit your needs. It, it really is a kind of a comprehensive bed accessory video. So, like I said, if you get a chance, go ahead, check that bad boy out. Uh, but today, we're gonna go ahead and replace the Velcro. Now, some tunnel covers don't have Velcro, they have snaps. Some of them don't roll up very nice. Some of them have a nice roll up setup to them. Uh, the one I have is a very common truck bed tunnel cover. It's built by Access. They are one of the leading people in the truck bed industry as far as tunnel covers. Uh, their quality is second to none. They use aluminum brackets, aluminum housings, so that it doesn't add a whole lot of weight, but there's a lot of strength to these parts. And the only part that ever really fails is this bad boy right here. Now, this is the replacement kit for it. And if I get a chance, I'm gonna try to... Uh, that part number is probably not available. They do have kit numbers. If I get a chance, I'm gonna go ahead and drop these kit numbers in the description down below. And what this will, kit will let you do is replace the Velcro so that you don't have to have the flaps, you know, flapping away because you only have it pinched at the front and back. You can actually have it to where the Velcro will seat down, sit properly and seal up your truck bed. Again, if you're going to run an access tunnel cover, you want your bed to be sealed from the elements. You can't do that if you don't have a proper cover that seals properly. So today, we're going to go after this. This is a very simple process. What we're going to do is slice this bad boy open, find out what we got in here. Now, what we should have is we should have the Velcro, and then there should be at least two set screws in this bag. And what the set screws are for is to hold this in place after you drill the pop rivets that hold the Velcro in. But you also will need making sure that I didn't have the screws. You will also need to have something to cut this with. You can use a side cutters which would probably work the best since this is a very heavy, hard plastic. It would probably be better to cut it with the side cutters because it'll cut cleaner. The other thing is, is you're going to need a drill with a drill bit. And when I get set up, I can show you exactly what that's going to look like. But the bag does come with four set screws, not two. So, four set screws. And what these are for is to run set screws on either end of the rail to keep that Velcro from sliding around because you're drilling out the pop rivets. So what we're gonna do is get started here. And the basic thing is to just grab one of the rails that you have, take a look at your pop, pop rivets, which are right here. Okay. And what you're going to do is just drill out these pop rivets. Now you want to place this in a spot that it's secure. One thing that most people don't realize if you have a truck, use your truck bed. Go ahead, fold your tailgate down. And set it inside the bed. What this allows you to do is kind of turn it a little bit so that you have a clean shot at drilling out that pop rivet. You'll see what I mean here in just a bit. Okay, so what it does is it stabilizes this for you, so it's easier to drill this pop rivet out. You do have to drill it out completely. 
in order to get that to slide. So I just use a simple corded, corded drill. And what you're trying to do is drill the head of the rivet and then you can knock the rest of the rivet loose. But you need a bit that's big enough to just chew off the head of that rivet. You're not trying to drill all the way through because if you drill all the way through, the new set screws they gave you will not work. So that will be big enough to chew through the rivet. Currently I'm using a 964th drill bit. You might be able to get away with uh, an eighth inch drill bit. That might work for you just fine, but I want to step up a little bit because I want to make sure that I get it all the way. I don't want to be re-drilling a bunch of brackets. Okay. Your bit is fully secure. happening is it is spinning on the back side. There's a way to prevent this, but you got to be very careful. So like I said, you don't want to destroy this part at all. And you don't want to hurt yourself in the process. Sometimes if it's being a pain, you can take a needle nose pliers, pinch the back side of the rivet as long as you can get a a grip on it. That way when you drill the top of it, okay. all right, so it's as much as it's letting me drill right now. So what I can do is kind of cheat this with a flat screwdriver. Just come underneath the pop rivet and just kind of press up. Now you can also at this time take your drill and now drill that pop rivet because there'll be pressure on it just like that. It came loose. Now you don't want to run that drill bit all the way through. Like I said, that's not what you're trying to do here. Now, if, if you go to try to use those set screws and they don't work, we can re-drill a different pilot hole and then run our screws in. And that may be what's going to happen here is that once we drill these out, we may not be able to uh, drill them the way we want. So, all I did was slide this out and this side just broke loose, allowing me to slide out my Velcro. Now don't just throw this away, you need to use this for measurements so that you get the right size strip. So now that we've got this, what I'm going to do is flip this around and I need to get this rivet out of here. When I go to slide the new one in, that's going to be in the way. There's enough of it back there that I'm just going to hold it with my uh, needle nose and just drill the head. Okay, the head came off. I stopped drilling. There's no need to keep going if the head comes off. Take your little pieces that come off, your drill bit. It's a little easier. Wipe away your aluminum, your slag. Go ahead and pick the remainder of this off. Okay, it's just gonna be a little piece, not very big. Go ahead and pick that off. Now your rails are clean and ready for the new piece. But 
before you do that, you want to make sure you get the tools that you need to cut it. You can go ahead and set this rail off to the side for now, because technically for now you're done with it until you get your piece cut. Your piece is going to come out of this. This is your stock. And then uh, the kit is big enough to do an eight foot uh, bed. Mine's only a six and a half, so I'm going to have a little left over, but not enough if I made a mistake and cut it. So I do not want to make a mistake cutting this stuff. Okay, I'm going to use a straight jaws tin snips. This will make sure that I can cut this stuff very cleanly and very quickly without having to fight it. Now one trick you can use is what we call an overlay or an overlapping trick. And what that is, is that you overlap it with your old piece. As long as your old piece isn't destroyed, you can overlap it like so, and then trim it to the old existing piece. Now what I've done is I've put my old one underneath my new one. And this allows me to see where I'm at to trim it. So I've trimmed my corner, looks very similar to my other one. Now becomes the measurement part of this part of this. And how I do this is I just overlay it underneath my old one. So my new is on the top, my old is underneath. And just take it nice and slow. Making sure I pull the top tight against the bottom. That way there's no gaps. Now for a deal like this, you would want to, uh, you would want to mark it if you weren't confident that you could snip it clean. So what I'm gonna do, feeling pretty confident that I can trim this pretty cleanly here. Okay, so now this is going to be for your other rail, so don't just throw this away, that ain't, that's not uh, excess. So, now with that done, now you have to trim that notch in it. So, I'm trying to hold it as clean as possible. And this stuff will want to curl on you, so it is a bit of a trick to get it. Get it to stay straight. Okay, so I've nipped both of my ends now. I'm looking pretty good. So I'm gonna take and set my old one off to the side and I'm gonna bring my rail back. So the way this is going to work is you put your knob, your your cuts in there, and you need to fish it now down the rail, just like so, until you got the new Velcro laid all the way in. 
Now, if this gets to be a little tough for you to pull, you could spray a little bit of WD-40. I would try to avoid putting anything on here because these strips are held on with an adhesive. So if you go and add adhesive, you could run into problems. The other thing that you can use for a, a lubricant is sometimes just soap and water. That will sometimes work the best. Okay, so it's getting tight. What I'm going to do is pull this off. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean that rail up really good. I want to get something in there to clean that up. So I'm just going to go ahead, a little bit of glass cleaner and some blue shop towels. I'm going to try to wipe and clean out as much dirt as I can in that rail. It was a good example of how you should have this really clean before putting it back together. And if you have a little glass cleaner down in there when you decide to go sliding this rail together, it's not going to hurt anything. In fact, it's going to actually help you get it to slide in properly. So nothing wrong with uh, having a little bit of glass cleaner down in there. And if I think that I need that, what I might do is just spray a little bit, wipe it once, and then I'm going to go ahead and just grab my strip and slide it in quick. Okay, part of the reason that it slides so tight is because it is curled. As you see, it's fighting the curl as it goes on there. And we still have a little ways to go yet to get it on there. Okay, we're getting really close. And what this will do is let us slide it all the way on. If we need to do any secondary trimming, we can once it's on there. But we've got, got about that much more to go yet before we're fully on there. Okay, so now we're getting close to where there's not much left to go on. So, we've now bottomed it out, just like that. Check our other end, see how far we're off. If we're a little off, it doesn't, it's not going to make a huge difference. But you can see if you're off a little bit, you can go ahead and move one side in or out a little bit more if you need to. Again, by doing that, just as simple as tapping it with a hammer. Only now we're going to use it. Okay. What we're doing is we're just adding a little bit more to the other end because our trim wasn't quite perfect, but it doesn't need to be because where it holds, you can see where the rails are on here. So you've got one rail sits here, here, and then another one up here. And where it holds is through here, through the middle. That's where you need your Velcro. Not so much on the end. The ends don't matter as much because they're pinched into the bed. 
But this does tell us that our set screws are not going to work. So what we're going to wind up doing is re-drilling our holes for our set screws. So the next size of my drill bit is a 3 30 seconds. And that's what we're going to go to for this. Because it's just a little too hard to work that screw in there and I really don't want to keep forcing it in there. Okay, perfect. Now you run the screw down about as tight as you can get it with your bare hand. Obviously don't run it in with a power tool, but that's all it takes. Now that's, go now that's set in there right where it needs to be. Now I do need to drill the other side and then this bracket is done. Now if I'd be drilling something that would be a little bit more uh, finicky, I would be running a small bit through first and then step up to my bigger bits. But because it's such a small bit anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and drill this one through. Okay. I would say once you start stepping up above your uh, 3 16 bit or bigger, I would probably run a pilot hole first before you just get carried away and try running a bigger bit through because you could run the risk of actually damaging the, uh, the bit in the process. You gain too much heat in the bit when you do it that way. Now that that is in there, this one's all set up to where now I can go ahead and bolt my tunnel cover on it. And this is actually the passenger side rail. So it will sit right here. But I wanna get, uh, I wanna get that other one done and get this whole assembly bolted together before I go that far. One more technique I can try. I'm gonna go ahead and knock the Velcro out of that one before I show you the next technique of how to trim that. The other way is to run it in, trim it off on the ends. So we're gonna do that technique because I wanna show you guys how to do that one as well. It's always nice to have a couple of different techniques when you're doing this stuff. Because not, not always one way is always the right way. Sometimes there's a couple of different techniques that might make it a little easier. this. Again, I'm going to drill these out. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clip this part out because you've already seen me do it. But once I get this out and I'm ready to feed that next Velcro in, I'll be right back with you. Just remember, if you're doing this project and you decide to trim it after, make sure that uh, Sure that you keep it tight and when you do your cutoff don't cut off a bunch of excess because it could get you in trouble
Now with this technique, you are going to have to go all the way through with it and then trim it off on the ends. So you're not going to be able to have a whole lot of excess to play around with. Because you can't, like if you get into a bind where you need to pound this in, you're not going to be able to do it in this technique. Okay. Like I said, if it feels like it's getting a little tight, we can try to add a lubricant to this. I don't want to get too carried away and add too much on there. So the technique that I'm going to choose to use is a blue shop towel with some WD-40. Don't spray it near your work area. What I'm doing is I'm soaking the rag in WD and then I'm just going to wipe the channel where the stuff's going to ride. And I don't want to soak it, I just want to get enough in there to allow it to slide. Okay. I'm noticing that one end is not working very well, so I'm going to flip this around because I think one of these ends is pinched really hard. What I tried to do there was wipe some down into the channel to make it a little easier this time going in. This one just seems to want to fight us, so... So we're all the way through and what you see me doing was like a hand feed technique. I was using my hand, pinching my thumb to the base, using my fingers to help walk this along. And this really does help to kind of get this in there, especially when it's so tight. So as you can see, we're a little bit past where we need to be. So now we're going to just trim this off. Quickest cut to make is right here on the end. That's just our quick cut. Now we're going to run our final.
Okay, we're a little long, that's okay. Because what we want to do is flip it around, trim this end off, and depending on how much excess we have, we can always move it around if we have to. But again, we're going to do a, fine, let's do a slimming cut here on the corner. And now we're going to do our angle cut. Okay. So now it looks like we're pretty good here, but we're a little long on the corner. So what we can try to do is slide it. Otherwise we can use a knife and we can just trim this excess off. So this won't get in there. Obviously it's too big. I'm going to try to just use an exacto knife and what I want to do is just trim this flush. Okay, stuff cuts very well with a blade. I was kind of wondering how it was going to cut with the uh, thickness of the plastic, but cut from the Velcro is where you'd want to cut the best. It's where it trims the best. Just put it up alongside the aluminum. Okay, so now we've got it pretty good. There's a little corner there that I'm gonna take off because I don't want that to be too sharp. This is where people put their hands, so I wanna be a little bit careful there. So now this is trimmed, all that's left is to do our set screws and then reassemble our tunnel cover. But I think that's gonna do it for this video. Like I said, all I got left is little set screws and then bolting this thing together. Now I may show that in the next video when we go to install this tonneau cover. I do want to clean out the bed, so I'm going to vacuum that. I'm going to do that off camera, no big deal. But I'd like to say thank you for watching. Please hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one.